Welcome everybody to our next webinar here at uh, JFD Brokers. My name is Stefan, Stefan Friedrichowski, as always for those kind of webinars, a little bit statistics, a little bit trading. And today the title is simply the big strategy review. Um, um, before I really start, I should mention the date. Uh, we have the 26th of October 2017, 7 o'clock at least um, here in uh, Germany. Uh, Germany is uh, you know, one point. Uh, it's always nice to have you all here uh, looking to the different kind of names I can see, at least those names uh, you write down there. Uh, I can tell you that we are quite international, at least it looks like. Um, being quite international. Uh, names is a good thing as well because um, in the German part of that webinar, which is always one day before, there's always always one guy who names itself Mr. Draghi. And um, you may know that today uh, it was a Draghi day once again, the EZB um, interest rate decision, uh, but uh, nothing really new happens. Um, but that is not really the topic of today, but the name of that guy is always funny. Um, I'm sure or pretty sure uh, that uh, the real Draghi is not listening uh, to my webinars. But anyhow, so um, today the big strategy review um, means that I simply want to go through the list of a few strategies we have introduced during the last uh, six months. Uh, because I think it's not only a matter of talking about trading strategies, it's really doing trading those trading strategies. And uh, therefore, from time to time, I should really show up all the trades I have done here uh, with those kind of strategies uh, so that you have a better impression of what I'm really doing here and that I'm not only... Um, a talk master here. Uh, it's my real business to have those trades, to have those trading strategies. And therefore, I want to share with you the results, the good and the bad, as the real trading is. And um, so you can be curious of the results, uh, different kind of trading strategies um, we have introduced uh, so far. Yeah. Um, the slides of today's webinar are already uploaded, so you can download them uh, through the GoToWebinar control panel, uh, as always. So you, those slides have um, some additional inputs about uh, parameters of trading strategies, so they might be of additional interest. But if you miss anything, just send me an email. You see my email address here s.friedrichowski, complicate last name, so just name me Stefan, at, uh, at jfdbrokers.com. Yeah, uh, so it's easy to get in touch with me, and um, for me it's always a pleasure to help you with whatever. So uh, having said that, this, you know, I have always to show up with uh, this slide here. The worst disclaimer, um, as always, I talk about trading strategies. Indeed, I trade those trading strategies. But finally, if you trade, you trade always on your own. Um, I think that uh, is self-explaining and uh, you understand that comment quite well. So what are the real topics of today? Um, first, once again, I um, show that uh, we are at uh, the trade fair um, the world of trading in Frankfurt, um, just as an announcement. So if you like, you can um, see me personally and other colleagues or, uh, at JFD. But then now about trading strategies. Before I show the real results of um, a couple of trading strategies we have introduced during the last couple of months, um, I want to focus you on how I personally judge review those trading strategies. So what are my key uh, figures for that? Um, just looking to the total profit or what else? So do what key figures I have in mind when I look to trading strategies in general? 
because if I look around, uh, for example, to those uh, social trading platforms where you can see a lot of trading strategies, it's always the same um, process which uh, I follow when I personally try to judge any trading account or trading strategy. And then we go through a couple of trading strategies. Um, so the first one will be the DAX day of week seasonal. Um, by the way, that's an interesting part. Um, when I first introduced that uh, trading strategy, somebody later commented um, in a way, oh God, now Stefan is talking about seasonals. Why the hell is he doing that? Um, pure statistics. Um, so, And then later he realized, oh, no, it's interesting because it's not just looking for different months and compare months maybe during the last 10 years, which is um, later than the statistics of 12, which is indeed not very um, heavy. Um, but for in this case, trading the day of week seasonal is something different um, because now we have about 52 Mondays per year, 52 Tuesdays a year and so on. And if we now look for 20 years, it's at least a little bit uh, better statistic than um, the classical seasonals in the trading context. So that was really a nice remark because later he realized, hey, no, that's a great thing. And um, yeah, let's look to the results of the trading strategy as well. For me personally, it's a little bit like uh, doing striptease here. Uh, <laughs> I think you know what I mean. Uh, it's really showing everything uh, as it is and um, the good as well as the bad. So let's uh, hope that we don't have too much bad things to report. But if it would be, then it's okay. Uh, it's trading, um, but it's a little bit better than that. So then the other um, principal concept of trading strategies we have uh, been through here uh, is what is called open range breakout strategies. So whenever we have a breakout from a time uh, period, time slot, and we have a couple of strategies here. Originally, I think I only introduced um, three of them. And uh, now um, I put one uh, on top of that. Uh, that is a gold account. That is a breakout strategy running on gold um, only. Um, so that is interesting as well. So I uh, put the numbers for that strategy here. Um, on my slides as well. That means really the, 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 the key figures, so breakout times and so on. And the other big concept have been power candles. Um, so big candles, which um, we see from time to time and uh, how to trade them, we have analyzed. And uh, so that will be another type of accounts. And then this topic of what I have introduced as being slightly martingale trading strategies. Um, of course, I know in principle, martingale uh, trading is uh, nothing you should do, but we have learned how to tame that martingale concept by being not that aggressive. And, and that is um, now a little bit of a combination. You will later see that I use, for example, power candles as a trigger for opening a trade sequence, which is then managed martingale. So finally, uh, I have a pure power candle strategy, yes, but I use an, a, something like that for a martingale trading strategy as well uh, as the, the trigger. Um, but there are two variants. One is an EMA following uh, martingale strategy and the other one is um, a power candle martingale strategy. Both are 
tamed. Tamed means they have stop loss, not like the real uh, Martingale approach. And um, yeah, we will look to that as well. Uh, I have been asked uh, to, to mention those strategy explicitly here in the webinar because I have uh, posted on LinkedIn some results of uh, the, that strategy. Uh, and so there, somebody asked already, hey, can you show a little bit more on that uh, during your next webinar? And uh, of course I do. So um, the other topic is simply um, if you want to be in contact with me via LinkedIn, uh, of course, no problem. You will find me definitely because my last name is more or less unique. So let's start. Um, oh, yeah, this um, WOT announcement. Uh, so the trade fair. Um, in the middle of uh, November, it's a Friday and a Saturday in November 1718. Um, yeah, I will be in Frankfurt. Uh, you can find me at the um, at the booth of JFD. I have uh, several um, webinars or talks uh, um, directly there, and I have one special topic um, which is called a seminar. Uh, so you have to register for that. Um, you will find me there as well uh, and there i will talk about um, who's the better trading is the human or the machine interesting topic i think so um hopefully the one or the other uh, can show up at uh, frankfurt as well and we can meet personally which would be really a pleasure for me to see you and not only see your comments or emails uh, so that would be really great but now back to our trading accounts, trading strategies. And first, um, for me, it's important once again to say what are the criteria looking to a trading account, because we now do both. Uh, you look to my trading accounts here um, and uh, you have to do the same job I, I have to do always to, to judge, to draw the conclusion is everything Okay, <coughs> yes or no, oh, sorry. <clears throat> Hopefully next time I mute my microphone first, just a second. Now I'm back again. Hopefully that uh, will not happen that often. <clears throat> so when we look to trading accounts, it's always important to have in mind we are trading is applied statistics. So what I always do then is um, I, I, I train my eyes and train my training my eyes means um, I use that Excel sheet I have um, introduced here several times because it's more or less uh, you can do a lot of things with that um, so I don't have to explain that much that means we have here an equity we we have a limit um, so a, a hit rate and we can simulate uh, how a trading account might look with a specific um, hit rate, a specific uh, gain, and a specific loss of a trade. And uh, yeah, it might look like this one here. And I always uh, only have to, to press F9, then I get a new equity line, which looks better, but is following exactly the same statistics of hit rate 51%. Uh, and um, gain and loss are um, equal here uh, in this case. So. But you see, even such a profitable strategy might have huge drawdowns uh, like, like here. But nevertheless, the slope is positive, which is nice, um, after 1,000 trades. But having seen this, assume you have started our equity or our trading results exactly at that maximum. So even 500 trades later, we are still in the minus. Even that might happen. So if you know how our strategy is running or what statistics are behind, we can use something like that to simulate the results. And now, once again, I've only pressed F9, so it's uh, still following the exactly same statistics. And we have an account which uh, has a negative slope. Even that might happen. Um, if we are not that huge profitable, if I would enter here higher numbers, uh, then of course more or less every uh, trading account is going to the north or um, 
so you see whatever I do, I never get um, a negative slope here. Um, but this is something we have always uh, to keep in mind, that trading is applied statistics. But now how to look on a specific account. So what I use is mainly two key figures, that's all. Um, it's the first one, and that's very important, is the maximum drawdown. So, um, so there's a highest uh, distance. Let me go back here. Uh, let me make the statistics a little bit uh, worse here. Um, so the, the, the longest sequence um, between that local maximum and finally the local minimum here, that difference is the maximum drawdown. So it's not um, losing trades in a row, uh, which happens here from time to time as well, maybe even 10 uh, losing trades in a row. Even that is not uh, that is not the drawdown. The drawdown is the maximum distance here from here to here, or just another example. So in this case, the maximum drawdown might be from here to here, or maybe from here to here. That is a maximum drawdown, extremely important key figure. The other one is simply the slope of the equity. So I look, um, is the slope positive, negative? Uh, and if you want to simplify that uh, even further, okay, then you can look to the total profit you have um, earned maybe after 1,000 trades or after six months or uh, whatever time frame. And the important thing is always the relation, the quotient of those two numbers is the most important number because that number is telling you more or less everything. Um, the good thing, if you, you look for that relation, then the account size is not of interest. Um, you, you might have a 1,000 euro profit and a maximum drawdown of 100 euro, or you might have an account with 100 euro profit and 10 euro maximum drawdown. Then those two accounts are simply identical in terms of profitability. Uh, so therefore, that relation, slope or profit, um, divided by maximum drawdown is telling you more or less everything. So, of course, the number should be positive. Uh, and if that number is already higher than one, then you are on a very good uh, path. So then it's already behaving quite well. You will see everything um, today, um, but those two numbers, have them in mind because those numbers will help you to, to really judge any trading account, really to draw conclusions. And there's another question when I look to trading accounts, it's a question, um, does it look like that there's an, uh, money management behind uh, and especially are there uh, stop losses uh, in those uh, trading uh, activities? Uh, so the question uh, should have um, a yes, uh, and you know that um, if you look to my trading accounts, of course, every trade has a stop loss, um, and uh, so that question is always answered with yes, but it's important to know that um, because otherwise we would have in principle unlimited risk and something like that I don't want to have in my trading accounts. But now, um, so uh, just a, a, a quick view here on that. Uh, you know we have had that slide already uh, before. Which equity here is the best? And having in mind exactly what I um, mentioned uh, the last minutes, you can straightforward identify that equity in number two. So that brown line here is the best one um, because that line has a moderate slope and um, very low drawdowns. So you might scale that account simply and you have in, uh, then the, the, the same profit like the red one here, but still not wiggling around that much. So the drawdown is still lower than from that red account. So that helps us looking for the slope, looking for the maximum drawdown, and um, that's extremely important.
So the first trading strategy to be reviewed is the DAX day of week seasonal. And um, always when I talk here now about those strategies, I give you a short review on um, what's behind. So in general, seasonals are um, cyclic uh, reoccurring events. They create something like a pattern and that is not always uh, that visible. Uh, we, we want to have them, but uh, that is exactly the definition of having any seasonal uh, like year end rally and so on. So that is um, a seasonal. But you can have other seasonals as well. It's not only related to months. Uh, it might be the day of months. So you might have heard that uh, the stock market always at the beginning of a month uh, goes maybe a little bit further north uh, than the rest of the month, uh, simply because um, people are reinvesting or big funds are um, reallocating their assets. Uh, there might be a reason. Um, and I even don't know whether that's true or not. Um, but other timescales might be a day of week, which is indeed uh, what we do now later. And hours um, can be um, viewed as well. So the main assumption of all seasonal strategies is quite easy uh, to conclude. Everything should repeat. So what we have observed in the past should repeat once again, uh, and that is our statistical edge. That is our um, probability advantage. And what we have done was we have done um, an analysis uh, from the DAX daily. Uh, and the first question has been, do maybe certain days of week, like Monday, is a Monday always a day which prefers to go north? Uh, so a long trade would be in favor um, or a Tuesday always um, or statistically um, more going south. And what we have learned, yes, there is such a relationship between um, day of week, but we need an additional input. And that input has been uh, the question, are we in a bull market or in a beer market? And um, the definition here has been quite simple. Um, it has been simply an EMA with a period of 40. And we define a bull market if we are above that EMA. And we define a beer market um, if we are below that EMA. And then we have specific days which um, in order to, to, to get um, the trade direction and we learned that on Monday, Thursday and Friday in a bull market, we should go long and the two other days, uh, Tuesday and Wednesday, we should go short. And um, if we are below that EMA, it's exactly vice versa. So how's the trading strategy running? Very simple. We look where we are compared to the EMA and then we open a trade at 8 o'clock with a stop loss stop loss of 1.1 percent and we trade more or less the open of the DAX. Um, practically um, I can tell you that I open my trades at eight uh, one minute after eight um, but that has only practical reasons because during the first seconds um, so close after eight um, the spread is still not uh, finally at the one point spread um, so therefore, I open the trade always at uh, one minute after eight. But that's uh, only a minor thing. But practically, it's um, important uh, because otherwise I would have uh, to suffer from higher spreads. So stop loss is always 1.1% um, distance from my open of the trade. And the trade during the day can only be closed by stop loss, nothing else. Uh, there's no take profit. And um, so if the take profit is not reached until 10 o'clock uh, in the evening, then we close the trade. That's all. So we don't have an overnight trade. Uh, we start at 8. Uh, we close latest at 10 um, if stop loss has not been reached during the day, which is not very often uh, that in this case, this strategy um, reaches the stop loss. So now 
exactly what I promised. I want to show you the real results of that trading strategy. So the procedure is now always the same. Uh, we look here to my trading accounts. Uh, we look to a specific account and I will create a report here um, as we speak because for me it's important really to tell you hey that's my trading account that's my result so about that strategy um, just looking for today uh, that's not statistics but uh, luckily hmm, i have a very good uh, trade today uh, but let's call, uh, think about uh, the reason for the trade for that trade so we are in a bull market you see the ema here uh, all my prices are above that uh, EMA value. So what day do we have? We have Thursday. Thursday is a normal day. That means to, um, today morning uh, I opened a long trade at 8 o'clock or just one minute after 8. Uh, I opened a long trade. Um, yeah, you see, looks quite well. Um, so nice trade. Um, doesn't look that I will lose uh, money today. Um, and that trade will be closed um, a minute before uh, 10 o'clock. So that's uh, the day, the trade of today. Just having in mind, yesterday was a reversal day, Wednesday. So yesterday there has been a short trade, which was finally still profitable. So that's nice. But now let's, let's look to the statistics of uh, that account. So let me create here um, a report so that I can really say, uh, say and state um, it is exactly what I trade is what you see here. Um, and that always takes a few minutes or not minutes, that should only take. So the trading account started at 2000 euro. Um, today we are um, at, um, now we will end uh, a little bit higher than maybe around uh, 2150 euro but now looking to that account and having in mind um, that what i mentioned about statistics having in mind what is the actual drawdown of this strategy okay maximum drawdown we can read the number is two point let's say five percent here um, we are uh, about six seven uh, percent uh, in the profit so the relation of those two numbers is um, about a three which is really running well so it's a very good account there might be people saying oh no uh, uh, I think uh, that could be better uh, it's not uh, that good account um, and looking uh, half of, of the trades here uh, went up here and uh, from there it's flat Yes, answer is right observation, but that belongs to trading and that is exactly what I mentioned or what I um, uh, name applied statistics. The conclusion here is we have a drawdown which is totally in the limits. So in the set limits here, the, the limit by the way is 25%. Um, so we are far away from from that limit of 25% uh, drawdown uh, we are profitable and we have even a relation between profit and um, maximum drawdown of about three um, so what can I tell you so I think great account you will see not everything is as good as this one here but it's an extremely simple strategy you know the rules now um, and by the way, if you uh, are interested in more details, you will find on the YouTube channel of JFD all the additional information uh, when I introduced that it's trading strategies. So there are um, recordings of those webinars so you can have a closer look and even to how to derive uh, such a strategy. So that's Duck's day of week trading. It's a wonderful candle here today. Um, okay, maybe only due to Draghi, I don't know. Whatever. Um, having that good trade today, you see, is only statistic. Okay, the trade is good today. You have seen we have had drawdowns in the strategy as well. It cannot be always going north. That would be too simple. But that's trading. So that's a day of weak uh, strategy. Uh, let's go further. Um, <clears throat> one other big 
uh, let's call it chapter or trading setup is everything around breakout strategies. And uh, just to introduce once again, that kind of trading strategy here, um, it's typically running the following. You, you have a chart, an intraday chart. We do this kind of uh, strategy, uh, strategy here only intraday. So um, we set two vertical lines, two time point in times. And in this case here, one is at uh, midnight uh, and the other one is at eight o'clock. So that um, two point in times create a time range, midnight until eight. And then we look for the price range between those um, point in times. And then we have a maximum here. And the minimum, by the way, is here. You can't see it, but uh, the candle goes down until here. And breakout strategies in general are always the same. You, at eight o'clock in this case, you place two orders, one buy stop order at the upper end and one sell stop order at the lower end. Stop loss is always the opposite range. So stop loss of the sell order is the red line here and um, stop loss for the um, long order is uh, this horizontal line here. In most cases, the strategy runs uh, as OCO orders, meaning one cancels the other. So in the minute, the sh short order has been triggered. The long order is cancelled, deleted. And um, as always, if somebody explains the strategy, trade is running well. Um, but that is uh, just picking the right example um, firsthand. And you see price goes down. So that the breakout strategies have, let's call it the belief, the assumption. If we have a breakout, that breakout should be long lasting, going in the same direction, not coming back. Um, of course, it's not always as nice as this example. We will see in a minute, but that's the principal logic of all breakout strategies. Since I talk here about breakout strategies only intraday, my trades are always closed uh, latest at uh, 10 because I don't want to have swap costs and um, even maybe uh, weekend gaps, something like that. Therefore, um, I close all the trades before or uh, at around 10 o'clock. There might be other degrees of freedom, further options, I call them. We might use an EMA as a trend filter so that we not place both orders, the buy stop at the upper and the sell stop at the lower end of the range. Um, we only place one following an EMA as a trend filter. You might have other uh, parameters like a maximum range size. Um, that means if the created, the builded range is too big, then you don't trade at all. So you don't place your trades. Um, or you might use a minimum range size because hmm, if the range is very small, then a little bit noise just would kick you out of the trade because the short is triggered going a little bit north and your stop loss is reached. So even that might be a good idea of um, further filters, options, or degrees of freedom in, in my language. Uh, so uh, at least the last one here, gut feeling uh, is not really something we can introduce mathematically, but anyhow, even that might be um, within your trading strategies. We have a couple of them. Uh, we have introduced one, um, which is trading DAX and S&P 500. Um, Originally on an M5 um, chart, um, it's not really in an M5 trading strategy. I would not call it uh, an M5 strategy. It's only because uh, we have we have time frames or we have time ranges uh, which are created on an M5 chart. Um, so. For example, we, we have one range for the ducks between um, 10 minutes after 10 until 40 minutes after 11. We apply an EMA as a trend filter, so only 
one direction is traded. Um, of course, we have a risk reward ratio for the trade. Um, in my previous example on, on um, this uh, chart, there the risk reward ratio has been simply one. But now we have other numbers and we um, include a minimum range as well, which is good to have. The downside is, um, at least for the last couple of months, and I can really tell you months, um, I have had nearly no trades in S&P 500 because S&P 500 is more or less sleeping. Uh, so the volatility is extremely low, uh, meaning I don't hit my minimum range. Um, yesterday, there has been a trade uh, all of a sudden. Um, one trade has been triggered yesterday uh, in S&P 500, but I think it was the first trade since two or three weeks. And that trade uh, ended in the minus. But anyhow, so we have in total six uh, set up sub strategies um, simply that open range breakout and uh, once again we look for the results um, so that is on another account it's this one here and today we have the funny situation um, if you read here a little bit uh, within my chart then you can see always uh, smaller minimum, smaller minimum, smaller minimum. So today I, I don't have any trade at all. Uh, so in both DAX and S&P 500, um, I have not a single trade today. Um, so a long trade on DAX would have been fine, but I have not reached my minimum range. So therefore no trade. Um, this case is not quite often, um, but today is such a day. So looking to the trade history, um, let let me check. Yeah. So the trade, uh, the account started at, with an account of uh, 4,000 euro. And uh, up to now, we have reached a little bit uh, nearly 200 euro. So 4,000 has been the starting value. And now let's have a look here. So that's the account result after. Oh, just a second. I have to look. I think the strategy runs. Yeah six months now six months trading activities um yeah that's the result so looking same thing as before uh maximum drawdown seven percent um right now we are total net profit it's uh, close to five percent so we are the ratio between profit and drawdown is a little bit below one I always prefer prefer bigger than one, but I'm profitable. I have drawdowns, but everything is okay. Um, could it be better? Yes. Uh, of course, it could be worse, but it's a profitable account. 6% about, uh, no, not 6 5% uh, about uh, trading result up to now, six months. Okay, not that bad. Um, if that would go on further, it would be 10% after a year. That's enough, at least for me. Um, so I'm still happy with that kind of trading strategy as well. So why not? Good. So that is an index breakout strategy. Um, we have others. Let me show you first uh, the... The two in principle, we have introduced two others on Forex, uh, one on uh, Euro Japanese Yen, um, which is um, more close to my introductional chart. But the range times are here from three o'clock in the morning until 10. Um, so if I write down here 9.59, it means principle uh, 10, but uh, um, that's only to, to tell you at 10, I place my orders. We use an EMA as a trend filter and a risk reward ratio um, close to two. That's for um, Euro Japanese yen. And the other one is, um, there are people around which call that uh, a modified Big Ben strategy for um, British pound US dollar. And um, there we have, um, Entry or the range time from 6:45, so it's 
in principle it's not an h1 it's in this case you might call it an m15 uh, anyhow it's uh, 6 45 until one o'clock uh, lunchtime uh, it's even trading with um, a risk reward ratio close to one and even below and here i use really oco but i apply another rule which is a maximum range and uh, funny enough yesterday um, there was an example so um, yesterday there was no trade because the range was too huge and um, so that's uh, the number here so breakout strategies in this case on forex running on forex let's look to the result here as well so first thing was um, british pound no uh, euro japanese yen yeah what do we have today um you see no open trade simply simple reason because we have had a long trade um and that long trade um is uh, has reached a stop loss um so the trade um went you see a little bit here to the north that was a trigger of the trade and uh, later we reached our stop loss which is good if you look how it's uh, developing further here but anyhow so that was a trade of today a stop loss trade looking to the key figures that's the 1000 euro account uh, right now about seven percent um, plus and let's have a look to um, the complete result here as well for this account running for six months now and equity uh, looking this so you see in here we have had quite a huge drawdown nearly 11 percent or let's say 10 percent but now we are nearly at the same level in the profit um, so still we have a positive trend we have profit but my relation my reward risk ratio it's now a little bit other number than the typical uh, risk reward ratio for um, <clears throat> entering trades uh, here it's my reward which is about eight percent um, compared with my risk which is now here the maximum drawdown <clears throat> of about 11 percent um, still profitable so i don't hesitate here to go further with that strategy it's positive it's behaving well i know i have drawdowns but that's trading the other account is even a little bit worse but um you remember we have now three results positive uh now let's look to um british pound um us dollar and here what do we have here um, we have an open trade um, it's a short trade um, for today um, a little bit in the plus but anyhow trading accounts is the smallest account i trade here uh, that's a 500 euro account uh, currently at 503 so let's say uh, we are exactly where we have been uh, starting and um, complete review looks like this one here so um and you will see in a minute we have been quite profitable and then we lose once again everything so we have been uh, up to 10 percent in the plus now we are back at starting position um so what can i tell um the slope would be positive but uh it is as it, as it is uh this account runs now for 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 um three months um yeah starting at more, more or less first of june no then it's four months um so those are the results once again that's trading so um uh, i don't have any indication to say no i should stop that trading so why i go on here uh, with that strategy still further and uh, now the one i think i have originally not really introduced um, it's um, trading gold um, here i have once again a 
quite different logic. I use sub strategies, yes, um, but I have three short strategies and three long strategies. So only if my condition is fulfilled, the comparison to the EMA, then I would open that short trade. There's another requirement um, that is the minimum range. I have some different times. All the ranges start at one o'clock in the morning. They have different end uh, times. Um, and of course, I have different uh, EMA parameters as well as risk reward ratios. So in principle, that strategy might do six trades per day, which is practically um, more or less never the case uh, because we don't can have, uh, we fulfill the short criteria as well as the long criteria within one day with EMAs uh, of uh, those numbers. In most cases, the strategy trades maybe one trade a day. Um, with those uh, time periods and looking to the results where we are uh, that was this one and now we have the gold account uh, today is no open trade for that strategy and um, let's look to the real results that you see always I'm really trading uh, and not only talking about trading, start equity 2000 starting from uh, six months ago. And that is the uh, equity. Honestly, looking to that kind of equity, it's more or less a dream equity, um, but it is as it is. So drawdown is only 1.35%, uh, which is really low. We are close to 10% um, profit. Uh, so the, the the ratio is uh, about seven or uh, in that range. So performance extremely well, um, nearly no drawdown in that strategy. Okay, not that many trades, um, I agree, but it's a filter. It's a filter of minimum range, um, which makes sure that we only trade when the volatility is high enough and if if not we don't trade um, and you see quite well results so those kind of breakout strategies running well so we have now um, four breakout strategies here um, one is more or less uh, neutral so being back at starting position and all the others the three others are uh, quite profitable, the one more than the other, but once again, that's trading. So um, those are the breakout strategies. Let's come to another chapter here, and that is the chapter of power candles. Power candles is an interesting thing as well, because when you might remember that, that when we introduced that kind of concept, um, I have something in mind here additionally, and that addition is that such big candles occur a little bit too often than pure statistics. So that means we have too often too big candles. If we would have just a Gaussian distribution or whatever distribution, we would not have them. And therefore, I call them the uh, black swan events. And those events have um, they they reveal um, that we are out of the randomness so we the, the price changes are not that random as normal and they are indicated by those power candles and that is always a chance for us as being a trader because we need that deviation from randomness and um, yeah that's the logic behind power candles in most cases yes they are driven by news like today um, ezb um, interest rate decision or any other news even not good news uh, which might happen around the world but whenever those news pop up then the big market 
but market participants, they reveal their real interest. Now they have to change maybe their position. And for them, it's difficult, much more difficult than for us. We trade my, maybe 0.01 lot, maybe one lot, even maybe 10 lots. But think about the big ones. They have to trade 10,000 lots. They cannot just throw one order in the market. No. Um, they have a huge amount of money to be um, maneuvered. And that is difficult. And when news pop up, they show their real interest. That's what we used, we have analyzed, and it's typically something like this one here. We have a power candle, and then we found that we have a typical behavior after such a power candle. And if you have something typical, that is our um, edge. That is our statistical advantage for trading, and that's how we come to those trading strategies. I want to show you results from two of them. Uh, one is based on H1 power candles, uh, which is this one here. Um, we have yeah, a few open trades. Um, one euro British pound, one US dollar Swiss franc. Um, right now, you see already, or you can imagine where that account started. The account is in the minus. Um, so we uh, started at 2000 with that account. But let's look to the complete um, history here. So here we are. And you will see everything happens, plus, minus. Um, hopefully it pop up here. There we are. Um, computer needs some time. So starting six months ago at 2,000 euro, and uh, that's how it looks like. You might say, okay, <laughs> nothing earned, nothing uh, lose, but yeah, we, we are in the minus. Uh, I don't, uh, so we have uh, 30 euros minus right now. Drawdown has been 7%, uh, which is uh, maybe from here to here or maybe from here to here, I'm not sure. So more or less the account is running flat. Do I change the strategy? Answer, no. <clears throat> Why? It's still running. It's not that bad. It's not earning, but it's not really burning money. <clears throat> so I don't see any evidence here to stop the strategy. So we have a nearly identical strategy uh, or running on D1. And I hope it will pop up here. Oh, that was only popping up very short, starting at 2000. And now finally <clears throat> um, earning 140 euros. Uh, it has been already more. Um, you see, we have um, a couple of open trades here for the different uh, symbols. And uh, let's look really to the equity. The equity is always telling you more than the number of uh, profit of 140 euros, because then you can see the shape uh, of that account six months now. And it's running this way. Uh, so once again, yes, there's a drawdown, 3.5% here. Uh, in total, we are at about 6% uh, plus. So uh, that's okay. That's good. Um, the relation is uh, <clears throat> about two between profit and maximum drawdown. Bigger than one. Equity slope is uh, positive. So running well. Um, so I'm satisfied with that strategy as well. That was the chapter about power candles. Now, last chapter, um, a little bit to those slightly martingale trading strategies, which is really an interesting topic and I'm still not through. Um, I create, honestly, um, one um, additional strategy per month, which is in principle based on that kind of concept. Um, just to introduce a concept uh, shortly, 
<clears throat> the origin of Martingale is uh, from from the roulette uh, roulette table, and originally you do something very strange. Whenever you lose, you double um, your 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 next trade, so to say. Uh, and if you would do that uh, on a roulette table, um, putting your money on black or red, uh, then your equity might look like this one here. And once again, I can can create equities. They have a common feature. They they have something like a straight line which goes north, but they are always extremely big um, uh, spikes to the south, like uh, this one here. Um, and that's the reason why, in principle, a martingale strategy is nothing to be traded. Um, but we found something how to tame it. And there are two things uh, for, for taming that kind of strategy. Being a trader means we need a stop loss. So we have to apply a stop loss. Stop loss alone does not um, help us, even for a martingale strategy. What we need additionally is the right selection of underlines. So we need underlines for example if we want to trade both directions simultaneous like we're going short and long simultaneously and then we manage those trades in a way that if the long trades is in the loss then at a certain limit we we buy you know from textbooks that is something you should not do but the right selection of underlines helps you and i can tell you we have to trade such a strategy on those underlines which don't show a good trending behavior. So we need underlines which tend to wiggle, wiggle around. Those are the underlines in favor here, and we find them. So that is one way even going long and short simultaneously, and I will show you an example of that strategy as well. The other one is, remember our last webinar, we talk about the predictive power of indicators. Um, so even looking back to our power candles is something we can use for slightly martingale strategies. If we have a power candle, we know that we have a statistical edge into the direction of that power candle. So why not opening a long trade uh, if the power candle goes north and then manage the trade slightly martingale and slightly martingale in my um, uh, language here means I open a trade with 0.01 lot and if I have a certain loss, then I open another trade with 0.01 lot not doubling, nothing. Um, and I iterate that, um, but still that package, that sequence of trades has a stop loss. And you will see that um, I reached for in, one, uh, in some cases that stop loss, but uh, you will see how that kind of strategy really behaves. Let me sh first show you the example um, with uh, that I have once reached exactly that stop loss. Um, that is here. So that is a trading account um, which has, no, that's the wrong, uh, where we are, sorry. Here we are. So that's a trading account um, of uh, 25,000 euro. We are in the minus. You see, if you look to the pictures here, you see really nice straight sequences. Focus a little bit here on the middle of Euro, British pound. You see um, that's such a sequence that is a short sequence. So there has been an initial short trade, then rebuying, 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 and then we got the profit. Uh, and we have long trades simultaneously as well. Uh, you can't see it exactly in the in the figure here, but now let's have a look really to the to the complete picture. Um, so let's create a report uh, for a strategy like this one here as well, and um, you will see um, there has 
been exactly one trade sequence reaching the stop loss value and therefore that's the reason why the account is uh, still in the minus uh, it's now acting since i think two months um is that right no it's one month no it's a little bit only more than one month um so and trading a lot and that is the um, result here so that strategy earns about 500 euros per month and I have this drawdown here, which is in this case 4%. I'm still in the recovering um, and I need about uh, one additional month. Then um, I'm back here at starting. And I know that those things like um, getting that drawdown will happen from time to time. Um, but it's important that I have that stop loss. Without that stop loss, it would be a no-go going for that kind of strategy currently the strategy is in the minus but uh, i'm pretty sure that will be recovered soon i mentioned that we can use a statistical edge as well for something like that and let me show you um, a, a small portfolio of uh, those um, strategies and uh, that is the portfolio of um for trading accounts let's start with one and i don't want we'll go in every detail here but um the portfolio consists of two ema and two power candle strategy this is one example of uh, ema it's trading strange symbols and they those three symbols create a triple triple means here Australian dollar, Canadian dollar, Australian dollar, New Zealand dollar, and then New Zealand dollar, Canadian dollar. So that is a complete triple. And that is following an uh, EMA approach. So uh, we open the trade into the direction of the EMA. And then we manage those trade sequences as slightly martingale. And that create exactly um, those plots with uh, green lines up profitable uh, trades red line are uh, non-profitable trades but the sum of all those lines which finally end here uh, is then uh, always positive at least if there are green lines um, as well so this account here for example started at 3000 is now at uh, 3086 and um, i have the same here um, as an EMA counter, so I go my trades against the EMA, and we have uh, power candles as the original trigger. Um, this account is, I think, the best one here, starting at 3000, now at 33. Um, and now let's look to that finally here as a portfolio. So portfolio means uh, still this strategy runs on demo the only one i show results here on demo because it's still my test phase uh, for that strategy and you see the results um, it's extremely positive um, i have reached stop loss values here as well but uh, you you will see so that's uh, the equity, the combined one, I could not create directly out of MT4. Yeah, that's the way it looks like. So um, you see, I have drawdowns even in that kind of strategy, but they are small. And I have something really going north um, extremely well. So looking to the key figures, um, drawdown is 0.4%. <laughs> that's uh, more or less nothing. And um, total return 6.7 and that only after one month uh, so sorry two months um, and um, so monthly return is here three percent which is an enormous result so which is really fine I'm behaving quite well uh, I'm happy with that kind of strategy and there will be others um, um, in a few days following exactly that kind of approach and the approach here means i use the combination of manage, manage managing the trade slightly martingale with that um, linear 
increase of my lot size if I'm in, in a loss and combined <clears throat> with that statistical edge for the entry like an EMA, like a power candle, like an RSI indicator. We discussed um, in the last webinar of uh, predictive power and uh, exactly that uh, will be the next one here in, in that concept um, based on an um, RSI indicator for the entry of such a trade sequence. So behaving well. Let's do this quick summary. What have we seen? We have had uh, two accounts in the minus. All the others are in the plus. A few of them even um, heavily uh, profitable. And uh, the two minus accounts was uh, the one uh, just 30 euros. And the other one is um, in percentage, it's uh, 2% uh, in the minus. So that's uh, still OK. And all the others are profitable, and a few of them are really highly profitable. Nevertheless, we have systematically derived trading strategies here, and still I don't make a statement or conclusion like uh, that this means that we generate automatically profits only. No, answer is no, you have seen um, those results as well. And uh, I hope you appreciate that I, being that frank with all my trading results here, I think there are not many traders around the globe uh, doing uh, something like that, uh, that transparent. You may hear that I'm smiling because you may um, know why uh, only very few traders are that transparent with their results. Anyhow, in sum, we obtain with that kind of approach profitable results up to now. Is that a guarantee for the future? Answer, still no. The good thing is that we have a couple of strategies being self-adapting, um, especially all the, the last one I have talking here. So they are always uh, self-adapting, so they change their parameters more or less uh, automatically. Uh, it needs my personal input, but only working-wise, but uh, uh, in order to, to, to start the right programs here. But um, still, I'm not at, uh, in a position to say there's any guarantee. Answer, no. But it looks good, and I'm um, quite satisfied with the results up to now. Let's see how it goes on. Uh, I will do reviews in a couple of months once again with new strategies, old strategies, because I want to share my results transparently with you. And I hope you appreciate that kind of um, presentation here as well. Even if it was have been um, a lot of equity lines um, today, but anyhow, I wish you uh, all the best. Uh, have a good evening and hopefully see you again, maybe in Frankfurt and otherwise in the next webinars here. Uh, so there will be still two, one in um, November. Um, and both are related to new and other uh, trading strategies and analysis. You will see. Hope, I hope you enjoy it. Bye-bye and have a good evening. Ciao.